Today we're going to talk about job rosters, all of those household chores, and more importantly, how to get everyone to help do them. G'day, my name is Jenny and I'm an Aussie mum of 16 children. Now running a household, there are always lots and lots of jobs to do around the house. So today we're going to be discussing job rosters or a chore chart, why you should have one and how to get everyone in the house helping out and doing some of those jobs. So you can imagine with 16 children that our household has been very busy over the years. Now we only have eight of them living at home now, which to most people that's a lot of kids But for us, it's just a little bit quieter these days because we're used to having so many more kids in the house Now it's important to remember that it's not just mum's job to do all the chores in the house We all have to do them So being part of a family is like being part of a team and that teamwork is about making sure that Everybody does some of those chores every day. Now, when I got married a long time ago, I used to think that being a good wife and a good mum was about me doing everything. So I would serve my family 24 seven and I would take care of all the jobs in the home. So I was polishing shoes and I was washing dishes and cooking meals and that works okay when you've got a whole bunch of little kids because it's a different kind of workload. But as the children were getting older and we were adding more and more children to our family, I realized that I was just exhausted all the time. And I guess you cannot pour from an empty cup. So if you're all housewifed out, and you're really exhausted from everything that you have to do every day, the easiest way to fix that problem is to get everyone in the house to also do some of the jobs. So by the time we had, I think about half a dozen children, maybe, maybe a couple more, I decided to make a plan and some kind of job roster so that we could share the workload equally. The children weren't all that old, so we, we chose an age that I thought they were capable of doing small jobs around the house. So our children went onto the job roster at the age of eight. The little ones um, below the age of eight, they did small things around the house too. They didn't want to be left out of all this fun of this new colorful job roster on the wall. So they picked jobs for themselves like um, taking the clothes from the bathroom to the laundry or straightening cushions up on the lounge chair and little fun things like that. Very easy jobs for little ease to do. But for the older children, we started off with a few basics, just like washing some dishes and learning to cook a meal and push a broom around and sweep the floors. So when I first started, I would just write it down on a piece of paper and I found that I was sort of scribbling things out and moving the, the jobs around to fit our schedule at the time. And it got just very messy and it was difficult to organize it. So I had to come up with a new plan there as well. So I got some colored paper and we allocated jobs and colors together. And then I laminated the little cards and then we could move them around as necessary to figure out what the roster was going to be. Now you could put some Velcro dots on the back of those or some blue tack and you could put it up onto a wall. But what I do is I just take a photo of the finished roster and then I go to my computer and I can print it out onto a piece of paper, laminate it and then pop it up on the wall. And the good thing about that is that it's really flexible. So we can trial it for a couple of weeks. If it's not really working out that well and we need to change a few things around, we can just simply print out another piece of paper, laminate it and put it up and replace the other one. So on the roster, we have the days of the week and all the kids' names that are living here at home at the moment. And then we have all of our different jobs. And then we have to obviously have 
certain jobs that need to be done every day and there's a couple that we're actually going to move around and maybe not do quite so often because we have a lot of kids at the moment that are very very busy and they're doing uni studies and you know schoolwork and part-time jobs and sporting teams so there's lots on and we need to make sure that we're taking all of those things into consideration when we're planning out the job roster. Now when I put the original job roster up on the wall, it took a little while for the kids to get used to the different jobs and what was required of them. And as a, as a good parent, I think it's important that we all teach our children these skills. They're going to need them when they leave the house. So it's our job to make sure that they are skilled that they know what they're doing so that when they go out into their into the world and into their own homes they know how to keep an organized home but after a while i got tired of having to remind the children of certain aspects of each job and so what i did was i made a list so i had the jobs and then all the expectations what does that job mean so I'm going to walk you through those jobs so that if you want to make a job roster at home you can certainly use some of these you can add or take away anything from this list uh, you might have a different family setup you might not have 16 children um, and you might just want to spread those jobs around just a just a few family members but I'm going to walk you through each of our jobs and what that entails and um, yeah and then we'll come back and chat a little bit more about some of the other jobs that we have in the home. Now the first job is prep and set which means that you set the table with the cutlery and the cups, you prepare the meal, you cook and you serve it and then you must also stack the cooking dishes correctly at the sink. Now the next job is packing which means after dinner you remove the plates and the cutlery from the table you put any scraps from the plates into the bin and you stack the plates at the sink. You then wipe down the table, you straighten the tablecloth, straighten the chairs and if you have little ones in your house you also clean the high chair. The next job is washing and drying. So you wash all the dishes properly, also all the cooking pots and pans need to be cleaned. You make sure they're all dried you clean down the sink and you put the tea towels in the laundry basket. So if you had a home where you have a dishwasher, um, we've never owned a dishwasher here in our house, but if you did, this would be part of this job. So you would be stacking the dishwasher and emptying it afterwards. Now the next job is bench and bin. You put the rubbish bins out, you make sure the bins are clean you put a new bin liner in and you pack away all the benches with all the clean crockery and cutlery and then you wipe down the benches. Now the next job is sweeping, which means you pick up any toys or anything left on the floor, you sweep through the entire house thoroughly and then you put the broom and the dustpan away. If you're on vacuuming, it means that you have to vacuum the carpet which means also moving the lounge chairs and getting underneath there. You must straighten the chairs and the cushions, put any toys or anything else on the floor away. And if there's any dirt under the edges of a mat, you also must clean the tiles around the edges of the carpet. And if your job is mop and slop, you get to wipe over the bath and the shower. You make sure that the bathroom mirror is clean Wipe over the bench and the basin and hang the towels and the bath mat up and if necessary you run a mop around to pick up any water that's on the floor. Now having this printed up and on the wall next to the job roster means that I don't have to continually remind the children what is expected with these jobs. They can go, they can read the list themselves and they can check that off when they've completed the job. Now another list that I have up on the wall with the job rosters is this one. Now I'm going to read this to you. It says, in this house, everyone must 
make your bed before breakfast. So I think it's a really great idea to make your bed first thing in the morning. It's one of those things that you can tick it off, you've done that job for the day, so you jump out of bed and you pull the bed up straight away and then it's all nice and clean and neat for the entire day and you don't have to think about that again. And when you're really tired and you're ready to go to bed at night, it's all lovely and fresh so you can just climb straight into bed and get a good night's sleep. Now the next thing on this list is clothes must be folded and put away. So in this house, I will wash the clothing and I will sort it into the piles that go into each bedroom, but it's the kid's job to fold their clothes and put it away. Now we all know that that's a bit hit and miss and sometimes the clothes end up in the drawers and sometimes it ends up on the bed and sometimes, yes, it ends up on the floor. But that's part of the learning process where the children will realize that oh you know I had clean clothes I left it on the floor now it's dirty so I'm either going to have to wear it when it's been on the floor or I'm going to have to go back and explain to mum why it needs rewashing. so I think it's great just to get in and um, let them take the control over that space let them fold their own clothes and put them away now the next thing is to keep your shoes in a crate. Now we have a shoe shelf where things like footy boots and work boots go, but all your regular shoes need to be popped away in a crate because we've all had that moment, haven't we, where we've lost a shoe and we can't find one. So if we put them away in the crate, then they'll be there when we need them. The next on the list is to put all the toys away and to make sure that the floor is clean. And again, this doesn't always happen, but it's a goal and we can teach our children to work towards that. The smaller the kids are, of course, the more toys you will have in the house. So sometimes it's about going in there with them and helping them pick them all up and putting them away. Now I ask that the kids will vacuum their room twice a week and they dust the furniture once a week. Now, that could be adjusted for your house. If you have a particularly dusty room, you might have to do that more often, but at the very minimum, I ask that they just do that once a week. And of course, all the doorways and the cupboards and the light switches need to be wiped over at least once a week. Lots of sticky fingers and lots of people coming and going in our house, so it's nice to keep all of those areas sanitized and clean. So I pop this up and then they can just read through this whenever they get a spare moment. So how do you actually get everyone to do the jobs in the house? Well, I think that comes down to consistency. So I think you have to be honest with your kids that there's a lot of things that need to happen in order for the home to run well. So if they just see a meal appear at the table and then after they're finished eating, they get to disappear and go off and play while somebody else does all that work, they're never going to truly understand the volume of work that is required to have that meal each night. So I would get them involved, get them into the kitchen and encourage them to give you a hand, get them peeling some potatoes or, you know, standing there and turning the meat over in the pan, anything that's sort of age appropriate. And of course, having it up on the wall, then they're also able to read that off. I've actually found that it's been a great help over the years, even with the kids reading. So they can see the list on the wall, they can read it, and then they can actually go and put it into action and do what's needed. Now, it may be different in your house, but in this one, we have never paid our children to do the everyday chores. We simply thank the children, encourage them, tell them when they're doing a good job, help them if they need the, an extra hand with what they're learning to do at the time. But if in your household you wanted to give them some pocket money or give them rewards in that way, that's certainly up to you and you would be most welcome to do that. But we actually haven't done that here. We have um, had those discussions before and decided that for us, doing those little things around the house is just part of being in a family. It's not something that needs payment. So we are just out to teach our children the best way we can, make sure that they get the jobs done and the skills learnt so that they can go out and be very competent at these things later on in life. 
Now it's also important to be really consistent with the jobs and about encouraging the children to do them. So if your family sits down to dinner at say 6 p.m. By 5 p.m. in the afternoon, somebody needs to be preparing dinner. So you may need to take whoever's on that job that night and you may need to stand in the kitchen with them and teach them how to make that meal. And there's nothing wrong if you want to help them prepare the meal. You can peel a few veggies and, and show them how to make it all. And then after dinner, you may need to set a time frame for all the jobs to be completed. And that way the children are aware that like I've got an hour and I need to get the dishes done and the floors swept and the carpets vacuumed. And of course, if the jobs aren't completed in that time frame, you may need to set some consequences. Now they don't need to be big consequences, but it might just be that if they were planning on sitting down and playing some games or watching a little bit of TV, then they may need to postpone that while they get the jobs done. And again, mum and dad may need to come and stand with the child while they're doing the job just to make sure that it gets completed and then they can go off and have their free time. They're just not going to have as much free time as what they would have had if they had done it within that time frame to start with. So eventually they will learn that, look, this is the time frame that mum and dad have asked us to get the jobs done in. And so it's best if we get them done straight away and then we can all go off and we can all relax. So when the kids get home from school today, we are going to be sitting down and redoing our job roster and making a few changes in there. As I said earlier, we are really super busy at the moment so I'm sure that there's going to be lots of negotiations going on making sure that we don't miss anyone's important events or their commitments but we make sure that everybody is doing all the jobs that are needed to be done in order to keep a well organized and clean home. Now I'd love to know what you do in your house do you use a chore chart do you have a job roster does one person do all the jobs or does everybody get in and contribute? Okay, well, I'm going to go pick up the kids from school so we can get this job roster done and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. God bless.